The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. again the immortal tale, The Haunted Hotel. Venice is a beautiful city. Its climate is ideal. Its building is picturesque. Its atmosphere, charming. But I... I felt almost physically incapable of pleasure as the oarsman tied his gondola to the castle hotel mooring. For in my brain there was just one thought. I kept flying around and around like an imprisoned bat. Why is Philip dead? Why is Philip dead? And it was this that had brought me clear across an ocean to Venice. Ah, good evening, senor. Uh, you have a reservation for Henry Westwick? Mm, uh, yes, senor. It was you who requested a northeast room on the ground floor, was it not? That's right, overlooking the canal. You are lucky. In the very next mail, another American named Miss James asked for the same room. Huh? But, of course, you had the priority. Oh, I'm Miss James. Does that mean I can't have room 14? Sorry, senorina, I am afraid so. Unless, of course, you can persuade Mr. Westwick to trade with you. Yours is number 15, next door to the young man here, but without a view of the canal. You wouldn't like to exchange, would you, Mr. Westwick? I, I wish I could be more gallant, Miss James, but I have a special reason for wanting 14. Boy, yes. take these bags, room 14 and 15. Uh, just follow the page, senor, senorina. Thank you. A special reason? You sound so mysterious. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm here to solve a mystery. Really? Oh, please tell me about it. Oh, that is, if you don't mind. Uh, no, I, I think I'd like to, Miss James. Just to make up for not being able to switch rooms with you. Six weeks ago, my brother married. It was very sudden. He'd met this Countess Narona and her brother Rivar while traveling through Italy. He'd fallen deeply in love with her. And they came here to spend their honeymoon. Oh, I thought the hotel opened just last week. Oh, it did. Uh, this was formerly an old castle. Philip rented it for a month. He, he was scheduled to leave the day before remodeling began. But something happened? He was only here two weeks when he died. How shocking. Not only that, but when I wrote to his wife for more particulars, I, I, I got no reply. She and her brother seemed to have vanished off the face of the earth. It took me a month to wind up my business affairs, but I'm determined to stay here until I find out exactly what happened to Philip. How? Why? Yes, I can understand how you'd feel about your brother, Mr. Westwick. But you haven't told me the reason you want room 14. Oh, uh, that was the master bedroom. I've got a hunch. If Norona left any clue, it would be there. Here are your rooms, sir, madame. Well, good night and very good luck. I'll... To see you around tomorrow evening, what I was, James? I think so. After all, we Americans have got to stick together. And, uh, Henry? Yes? My first name's Elaine. I went into my own room, shut the door, and immediately that overwhelming sense of depression closed in on me again. For a few minutes there in the hall, Elaine's warmth and vitality had dispelled it. Now, alone, in the very place of my brother's death, I felt more than ever confused and discouraged. Where to start my search? I didn't know. 
But as I crept between the cool sheets, I thought, oh, how much this room could tell me. If it would only speak. If I were only sensitive enough to grasp what it was saying. Then I... I just drifted aimlessly with the sound of the canal in my ears, lifting me up, bearing me along like a bit of wood on its surface. For a while, I, I didn't realize the sound had changed, that it had become a murmur of voices speaking fluent Italian. But then I, I began to see them, a man and a woman. Their images were slightly distorted, like an improperly focused motion picture. And even through my dream, I, I knew I was outside the scene, invisible to them, an audience of one. How can you ask that of me, Rival? You're my brother, the only one on earth I care about. How can you ask me to sacrifice myself to that... Uh, unattractive bore of an American. Do you think I'm unaware of your feelings, Nerona? That I'm totally blind to how much it repels you? But what can I do? They're after me again for my gambling debts. And those men are vicious, completely unprincipled. Why, killing me would mean as little to them as snapping a toothpick. And surely you don't want my death on your soul. Oh, please, Riva. Don't try to work on my sympathies. You sound like such a fool. But Nerona, he's not an unkind man. Didn't he lease this castle for us and let us move in just on the hope that you'd marry? Keep still, can't you? Very well. I shall send Westwick a note by messenger saying I accept his proposal. What's today's date, Riva? It's the 16th. December 16th. And thank you, Nerona. I don't know which happened first. The screen going blank or my mind refusing any more of the vision. But suddenly I found myself sitting up straight in bed, my eyes wide open, my hands digging convulsively into the quilt on each side of my sweat-soaked body. Oh, what a horrible nightmare, I thought. And perhaps I could have accepted it as such, except for one thing. In the dream there had been a waste paper basket near Nerona's desk with a newspaper lying on top of it. And while I could not see the Countess nor her brother clearly, the date of that paper had been quite plain. December 15th. And my brother had written to me that his fiancée was so eager for their marriage she had inadvertently dated her acceptance a day ahead. That detail had left my mind completely. Could this dream have been an extension of reality? Emotions undergone so vivid they had left their impress on the walls to be returned to whomever would receive them? I... I did not sleep much the rest of the night. I spent the next afternoon in a thoroughly fruitless search for some clue to Nerona's present whereabouts. I was rather glad by eight o'clock to shower and change clothes at the hotel. I'd just finished dinner and decided on a stroll when I heard Elaine calling me. Henry! Hi. Do you always eat dinner so late? I waited for hours and hours, and then I decided I was just too hungry. Well, I am flattered. Want to go for a walk with me? I'd love to. And you needn't be so pleased with yourself. It really isn't any special accomplishment of your own that you're the only decent-looking male in the hotel. Mm. Thank you for that left-handed compliment. And are you going to chase me all over the place, Elaine? Oh, madly. <laughs> Tell me, how did today's sleuthing go, Sherlock? Oh, not very well, I'm afraid. The only new factor I've discovered is that no one in all Venice seems to have ever seen Nerona. Why, that's incredible. I know. But Philip alone signed the lease, and then he and Nerona and Rivar moved into the castle. That much the real estate agent told me. How about the servants? Surely they must have seen her. Well, there was only one. A man named Ferrari who'd been with the Countess a long time. Now, he's disappeared completely. Oh, I suppose they took him with them, wherever they've gone. You have got a puzzle, haven't you? Well, even if I did discover that Philip was murdered, I still don't have the faintest idea of what his murderess looks like. And nobody seems familiar with their titles. Probably phonies. Say, I never thought of that. You know, Elaine? What? I'm not sure, of course, but there really may be something under that hair. Why, you... Oh, well... <laughs> Ouch. And I should wear my brass knuckles in the future. Madam, please, I have a very delicate stomach. Did you hear the sound it made when you belted me? <laughs> Idiot. That was my bracelet. <laughs> See? Six tiny sleigh bells on a silver chain. Oh, well, I thought that they only put sleigh bells on horses. Oh, you... Ow! 
Maybe we'd better get back to the hotel before you really get angry. Then you'll have to carry me home. <laughs> I'd never met a girl like Elaine before. Pretty, intelligent, with a sense of humor, all at the same time. It was with the greatest reluctance that I finally consented to our saying goodnight. To making her promise that she'd see me next evening. But was that the only reason I wondered? Was I afraid that I might have another dream? I pulled the cover up to my shoulders. And almost instantly, as if it had been impatient for my coming, the dream began again. I can't stand him any longer, River. Not another day. We've been married just two weeks, and already he's scrimping. Already he's being economical. Why don't you take the bus, Marona, instead of a cab? It's just as comfortable. <laughs> and he seems to think that paying my debts absolves him of all other responsibility toward me. And what's more, that I should be eternally grateful to him for it. <laughs> Has he said anything about those suits I bought? No, he hasn't seen the bills yet. Oh, it's hard enough on you, I'll admit, but... How about me? He just stays in that library, reading all the time, and refuses even to let me go outside the door without him. River, I'm leaving him. No. Why not? We've paid off those gangsters you call your friends. Look, let's not fool ourselves, Nerona. We'll always be spending more than we've got. We can't throw him away. Just yet. Baron River, Mr. Westbrook wants to see you. <coughs> I'm afraid it's that tailor bill. Oh, Lord. Now I'll have to stand there like a disobedient little boy while he gives me a dressing gown. <coughs> I said I thought you were out of the house, but... <coughs> but he... He'd seen you come in. How's your cold, Ferrari? Oh, not too good, Countess. Not too good. If only there was some way to have Westwick's money without his presence. Or if we could just make a quick killing and... Yes. A quick... Killing. River, no. Do you want to live with that man the rest of your days? Tell me, Nerona, does your husband carry any life insurance? All had gone black again. I was pushing desperately through the thick sludge of sleep, struggling back into consciousness. It was nearly dawn. The world from my window looked cool and clean and quiet. I was so shaken I, I could barely dress. But I knew only a long walk would calm my shivering nerves. And besides, there were a few telegrams I had to send. Telegrams which might clear up the mystery of Philip's death. incredibly better than I'd hoped. And yet, getting my key from the desk that evening, I realized I was right back where I started. I walked down the corridor and hesitated in front of Elaine's door. Should I knock and say hello? Or wait till I was dressed for dinner? And that problem was quickly solved. Good evening. Well, how did you know I was here? Well, ours are the only rooms at the end of this hall. I heard you walk by and stop, and no sound of a key. <laughs> For a moment, you had me worried. I, I thought you were psychic. Oh, I am, didn't you know? I am the seventh daughter of a seventh son of a seventh son. They slipped me in because they thought they were getting in a rut. Really? Well, then I don't have to tell you what I found out today, do I? Oh, you know it already. <laughs> oh, come on inside, you horrible creature, and stop keeping me in suspense. Now, tell me all about it. Well... I feel like a pawn in a chess game, Elaine. The minute my side forges ahead, something occurs to checkmate it. Like what, for instance? Well, like discovering Philip had been insured for $50,000. $50,000? I telegraphed all the insurance companies in America today, and one of them cabled the information immediately. Why, Henry, you're brilliant. Whatever gave you the idea? Well, I've been having... It was just a hunch. They gave me the name of Philip's examining physician here in town who filled in the death certificate, and I checked up on him this afternoon. Yes? No. He's straight as a die. Got the best reputation of any doctor in Venice. Now, he swears my brother died of bronchitis, and, 
Well, I, I'm sure the insurance examiners weren't any too cheerful about handing out $50,000, especially with only one premium paid on it, but they believed him. Oh, that means a dead trail again, huh? I'm afraid so. Oh, Henry, I wish I could help you. If there were only something I could do... I'll tell you what, Elaine. Get into a fluffy dress and clasp those funny little sleigh bells around your wrist and we'll go out and really see Venice tonight. Okay, Henry. I'll meet you in the lobby in ten minutes. Henry, what is it? You've been trying to act gay all evening. That's exactly what it's been, an act. I'm sorry, Elaine. I, I didn't mean to worry you with my troubles. You worry me much more when you won't tell me. What worries you? I know you're tired. It's nearly two o'clock and you've been yawning for the past half hour. Elaine, would you think me crazy if I told you I was afraid to go back into my room? Afraid to... to go to sleep? But why? I... I have the most hideous dreams. All about Philip and the Countess and her brother. Oh, good heavens, Henry. That's perfectly natural. The three of them are constantly on your mind. And you are using your owner's old room. But, but the nightmares seem to be planned. They, they seem to have a purpose behind them. Look, if you wish, I'll gladly change rooms with you. No. No, thanks a lot, Elaine. But the least I can do for whatever's trying to give me the message is receive it. Good night, funny face. But sleep didn't come so easily now. Perhaps because I was too anxious to get into the dream, or because for the first time I'd acknowledged a complete belief in it. At any rate, my eyes simply wouldn't stay closed. My mind kept whirling ceaselessly. I tried to lie very quietly, without thrashing, and my body grew taut and straining with the effort. Finally, just as I felt I could stand this immobility no longer, the thread snapped. My brain went limp, and the shadow play continued. Take another look, Riva. He promised he'd come immediately. The doctor's not here yet, Nerona. Do you think I'm blind? No, no, no. I'm sorry. It's just nervousness, I guess. Poor sister. Never mind. It'll be all over with by tomorrow. Countess. Yes, Ferrari. Ah, but we should come to this, Riva. The only friend we have left. And we bury him in another's grave. I don't mind, Countess. In fact, I should be flattered. Think how long I shall be pointed out as a millionaire instead of the pauper I really am. <coughs> Twice before I, I had this illness, I knew a third attack would be fatal. He's coming. Quickly now, Ferrari. Repeat your story. Yes. I am Philip Westwick. Last week I caught cold, but I refused to have a doctor even though my wife pleaded strenuously that I should. I hold a $50,000 policy on my life, and in the event <coughs> of my death, I wish the doctor to communicate with them. My wife will arrange all the funeral details and notify my relatives in America. Right. Now... I must go into the library and find my husband. He'll be pleased to see me, I'm sure. There's a small jeweler's bill of mine he's taken in there to study. Oh, well, that'll soon be over for good. And it's most important Philip doesn't wander into this part of the house while the doctor's still here. That might prove awkward. Nerona, when do we finish with Philip? Tonight, after the doctor's safely gone. How? A knife. But you know I can't stand the sight of blood. Don't worry. I intend to do this thing myself. I do not propose to have it bungled. There. He's at the door now. Wait until I'm out of sight, then answer it. And, Riva. Yes? If the doctor asks where Mrs. Westwick is, tell him my constant vigilance has tired me so. I'm asleep in another room. <laughs> Very well, Narona. Very well. The tableau faded slowly before my eyes, and try as my subconscious would to call it back, make it unreal further for me. The curtain remained stubbornly closed. I, I didn't wake after this dream, as I always had before, but sank into a dense hypnotic slumber. Then I felt hot, bright fingers of sunlight touch my eyelids. I knew it was morning, and I awoke. 
Between that and my breakfast, I formulated a final plan. Something in last night's vision had given me an idea. It was just a little lead, to be sure, but everything else had turned out in blind dally. So I, I had to try it. I was sitting on the floor in the library, surrounded by books, when Elaine walked in. Oh, looking for someone, lady? What? Oh, oh Henry, is this where you've been all afternoon? I just came in to get a magazine, because when you're not around, the hotel's so boring. Oh, thank you for them kind words, ma'am. You can add them to my bill when I leave. <laughs> what are you doing? Is this another clue in the case of the missing counters? Or have you simultaneously lost your mind and found a new variation on paper dollies? It's a clue, uh, I think. Well, sit down here and make yourself useful. All right. Now what? Well, look through this pile of books and see if you can find a bill or a letter. I have reason to believe Nerona bought some jewelry. So what? All women buy jewelry. Even I do. <laughs> if we can find out where she bought it, we'll be able to get her description. See? Oh, of course. What a dope I am. Oh, I never argue with a lady. Why? <laughs> Even if the bill's not here, it won't matter too much. I'll canvas every jewelry store in Venice till I hit the right one. How come you're so sure of this angle, Henry? Did you find out something new? Well... I had a dream about Nerona last night. Oh, well, tell me, Henry. What does she look like? Is she beautiful? That's funny, but I, I don't really know. It's as though I'm nearsighted and can't get the image distinctly. Help me, I've tried. Hey. What? Oh, Henry, it's a letter. Well, open it quickly. See if it's the one we want. It is. A bill made out to Philip for 3,000 lira. Oh, Elaine, this is the break. This is the opening wedge. I've got a hunch that from now on the mystery's going to crack wide open. I'm going to phone the jeweler for an, for an appointment. I don't want to be a killjoy, Henry, but it says on the bill, store hours from ten to six. It's nearly seven now. Oh. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll go tomorrow. Tonight we'll celebrate. We'll have truffles and nightingales, tongues and champagne. The works. Anyway, Henry, we'll have the champagne. Late that night, when we returned to the hotel, I felt more than ever that at last I was getting to the root of Philip's death. I crept into bed. I could wait for the dream calmly now. Because I was no longer running around in circles. But right at the threshold to my brother's vengeance. I... I recognized the corridor outside my own door. And Rivar and Narona walking softly toward it. You're sure you can do it? I'm not afraid. I'll go through with my end of it. Just be sure you don't mess up yours. Remember now, the biggest wine cask you can find in the cellar. And so a wide enough hole in the top so the body will go through. Have you got the knife? Of course. Now go, for heaven's sake. You make me nervous. I watched her. With an icy, agonized horror no earlier dream had produced. She stealthily opened the door. And I could see Philip at the window. His back toward us, gazing out over the canal. He didn't seem to hear her footsteps sliding across the floor, coming nearer and nearer to him. I wanted to shout, scream at him, warn him against Narona. But I knew I was just a spectator, watching a hideous motion picture, and I could not change this ending. She stopped then, motionless, just in back of him. I saw her hand come up slowly, with a sharp, slender knife, the blade glittering up right with the bracelet on her wrist. Just as it started downward for the final thrust, I heard a familiar sound. It was then I realized the dream had dissolved and that I was gazing up at reality. I grabbed her hand. Oh! oh let me go. Elaine. Who it was you? Let me go. No. I think one member of the West Street family is quite enough. Countess Narona. One moment more and you'd never have known my identity. Yes, I would. I'd seen your hand. With a knife, with a sleigh bell bracelet. So, that gave me away, did it? The last thing your brother ever paid for alive, Henry. If you had not found the bill for it, I shouldn't have tried to kill you tonight. No? When would you have tried to kill me, Countess? Perhaps never. I liked you, Henry. Rivar and I learned of your arrival from the shipping news while we were at Milan collecting Philip's insurance from the branch office there. I followed you, of course, to make sure you discovered nothing. However, we were both unfortunate. Especially you, Narona. 
Walk in front of me to the telephone. I've got the dagger now, remember. Night clerk, will you please call the police, tell them there's a murderess in room 14? Yes, thank you. Go on, Nerona. What about your American accent? It's quite perfect. I really am a countess, even though from an obscure town in Luxembourg. And I was given the appropriate education. I could speak six languages fluently at the age of ten. However, one cannot turn titles into bread nowadays, and so we had to live by our wits, Riva and I. Come in. Senora Westwick, they are here. Shall I send them in? No. I shall go out to them. Henry, take this bracelet to remember me by. Such little bells. One would not think them capable of sounding a death knell. Signora, the authorities grow impatient. Of course. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye. Goodbye, Elaine. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal story of the haunted hotel. Bellkeeper, pull the bell. Thank you.